Hey everybody, what's going on? This video is about starting pawpaw seeds. Um, these are some of the seeds that I collected from some wild pawpaw fruit in my area. I'm in Zone 7B, Tennessee. Um, and I kind of picked out most of the biggest seeds that I could find, which might indicate the best seed quality. Um, <clears throat> these have been, we're in like the middle of winter now, and these have been actually um, stratified in my refrigerator. Although you don't, probably don't even need to do that with pawpaws. Basically just meaning wrapped up in a moist paper towel, a plastic bag, and uh, basically forced into dormancy, but it gets cold enough here. And these are local fruit anyway, so it's actually totally fine to just plant them directly, which is what we're gonna do today. Um, a couple things, sorry, I'm out of breath here. Um, pawpaws have a, a long taproot, so if you're gonna be planting them directly into the ground, or in, even in pots, you wanna make sure that there's a lot of depth um, this might not even be deep enough, but um, honestly, I don't really want them to go uh, much deeper than this. So if I dug it more than I normally would for direct sowing seeds, and this is not for uh, the final placement of the pawpaws. I've got plenty around. There's actually a bunch of dormant pawpaws throughout the property here, and this is actually just for sharing and selling the small seedlings to other people. So I'm kind of planting them all in one area, and when they sprout, I can dig them up and um, and uh, sell them or share them bare root, but I want to make sure they're off to a good start here. Um, a couple thoughts though: um, the pawpaw is related to a lot of tropical species because it's in the Anona family. And um, one interesting thing about if you study plants in the tropics, especially trees, and when you start seeds for tropical tree species. Um, especially ones that have a taproot, like the pawpaw does, and I'm guessing most other tropical relatives like the cherimoya or the atamoya, um, they send down a long taproot, and if you're, if you're starting the seeds in a spot that's not the permanent location, you really don't want that taproot in there because um, when you transplant it, it's gonna be a big shock, because uh, plants that have taproots tend not to like to be transplanted, because it's like, a, throws off their, their stability with the taproot. So what people will do, and I'm not doing that today, but another idea is to basically uh, take the pot that you're putting in and make it have a lot of, uh, here actually, let me show you an example. It's gonna have a lot of uh, aeration uh, holes. Okay, this is the pot that I'm talking about. And honestly, I probably should experiment with uh, starting them in these, these pots. Um, because the, the idea is that when the taproot hits the bottom of the pot, it's going to self-prune. Um, because when it, when it comes out the bottom, it realizes there's air and the root will die, at least the bit that's exposed. So instead, it's going to send out lateral roots to the side, which will make transplanting a lot, a lot easier. And it will be uh, less of a shock to the plant because it won't have developed as much of a taproot yet. So that's just a thought, um, a side tangent. Today we're planting in these, or in this hole, it's about 10 inches deep, and I'm just kind of planting them evenly. I'm gonna use a real loose uh, rooting medium of perlite, vermiculite, and compost, and some uh, coconut corch. Okay, it's filled up with our loose soil medium. Uh, one other point here is I was about to make this video in a different part of my property, uh, in the corner of that mulch over there. Um, and I realized that that area does get full sun especially in the summer. And this area has a giant fence and that's south in that direction. So most of the year this will be shaded. So it actually, in terms of pawpaw nursery or pawpaw um, germination areas, it's actually probably one of the best um, locations. I'm actually gonna mix some of this native soil back in while we talk. Um, because for the first couple of years, pawpaws definitely like um, to be shaded and protected. And, you know, uh, I've heard multiple different things about whether or not pawpaws can um, fruit in the shade. Most people say that uh, you will only find pawpaws fruiting in the sun, either part sun or full sun. But I mean, the, where I collected these seeds from, I mean, this was a dense forest canopy and, I, and the understory had pawpaw trees with fruit on them. So maybe they just mean the better, uh, the better fruit year field on trees with part sun and full sun. But for sure, everyone agrees you want to start them out in the shade, which is what we're doing today. And it should take 
I don't know how many months, um, but we're in January right now. And so I'm gonna plant these now and we'll check back in three or four months and I'll make another video when uh, these seeds start sprouting. And I'll talk about transplanting them out. Okay, so we're gonna plant the seeds now. Spacing, I've never done this before. I'm just gonna do it just general, um, pretty close spacing here because probably three per row here. Because, you know, two, two reasons. One is that um, pawpaws have a taproot, so they're not gonna be worried as much about spreading out laterally, you know, as opposed to if you were growing tomatoes or something. Um, and second, you know, these are gonna be transplanted out within the first year. So there's a much smaller risk of crowding. Um, but there's also, um, you know, some theory um, when it comes to seed starting that says that uh, when you're starting seeds, even if they're just um, annuals, uh, you wanna actually make sure they have a ton of room because the seed will activate certain uh, genetics that say, okay, it's crowded, resources will be scarce, so grow small, grow slow, and if you plant them in a, a place that has lots of room to grow, the message to that it's gonna activate in its DNA is that is the genes that say, okay, grow big, tall, strong, because there's plenty of resources to support yourself. So um, I'm not sure, I'm planting these really tight. I'm even adding in some more because you know I, I have a lot of pawpaw seeds. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of like, it's a little random, I guess, but if you've watched my other videos, it's kind of how I do things here. I don't take a lot of like measured care for everything. And with a plant like this, this is a wild um, native plant to the area. So it's actually gonna be pretty resilient. So, you know, if it was something that was a little more difficult to grow, I'd be more careful. So I'm just gonna pile some more soil on top here and I give it a nice mulch and we'll check back in a couple months. Stay subscribed or click subscribe if you wanna stay updated and see what happens with these pawpaws when I transplant them out. Thanks for watching.